Hello, welcome to my channel, Another Bibliophile Reads. My name is Greg, and today I'm doing Clive Barker's Book and Movies Tag. This is an original tag from Cliff's Dark Gems. And the idea of this is to read out some prompts based on Clive Barker's books and some of his movies and relate them to a horror novel or story. I guess you don't necessarily have to relate them to a horror book if you don't want to, but considering this is Clive Barker, I'm keeping my um, prompt answers to horror-ish books. There are a total of 13 prompts. Prompt number one, author prompt. Choose a book written by a diverse author and or that contains diverse characters, themes, concerns. I am picking a diverse author. That is Victor Laval. He is an African-American novelist living in New York City. And I am picking his first book, The Devil in Silver. He has written a few other books that I have read. I have not read his most recent book, Lone Woman. But Devil in Silver so far, I think, is my favorite of the three books that I've read by him. It is the story of Pepper, a man who finds himself in a mental institution in Queens. One night in his um, room, he is almost killed by a creature. This creature has the body of an old man and the head of a bison. He survives, but he thinks, Am I crazy? I'm in a mental institution. But the other inmates tell them, no, this creature stalks the halls of the mental institution at night. So Pepper decides he wants to rid the institution of this creature. It is a really good book, very atmospheric. I don't read a lot of books set almost entirely within the walls of a mental institution. And that was an inspired choice because strange things can happen in mental institutions. And you do have to wonder, is Pepper just nutsy vegan? You'll have to read the book yourself to find out. Prompt number two, books of blood. Name a book that has blood and or gore on the cover. The Morgau Rises by Peter Tremaine. Now here we have a woman. She's being eaten by this giant worm with teeth and blood is dripping down. She's hanging upside down, her hair's all falling and she's screaming. She's probably naked in his mouth. Now, I did read this book a few years ago. Honestly, I don't remember much about the plot of this book. It was not very good. But look at this absolutely lovely, brilliant cover. This is what a horror book cover should look like. Gory, nasty, and just delightful. Prompt number Three, The Damnation Game. Name a book where a character, characters, take, chooses sides with the devil or demons. I am choosing Falling Angel by William Hortzberg. This is the story of um, Johnny Favorite. He is a singer in World War II, but he gets caught in a strife from the Germans and is left comatose. Unfortunately for Johnny, he has a contract with a man named Louis Cipher, and Johnny Favorite owes Louis Cipher something upon his death. And um, Louis Cipher is having trouble locating the comatose body of Johnny Favorite. So he hires Harry Angel to track that body down. And again, this is just an absolutely wonderful book. It mixes crime fiction and spiritualism and horror all in one. 
something that makes a really great book. It was made into a movie called Angel Heart, which I saw many, many years ago, and I don't remember much about the movie. But the book I want to read reread again, because upon the author's death, they found an unfinished sequel or a nearly finished sequel that they published posthumously. And I need to pick that one up and read it. But I have to reread Falling Angel first. And I think it'd be well worth it. Prompt number four, The Hellbound Heart. Choose a book with a crap load of body horror. I am choosing Mother Maggot by um, Simon McHardy. This book was absolutely disgusting, but in a disgusting way that people who read extreme horror will really enjoy. It is the story of a, a couple of people who have, um, let's just say, some peculiarities. Um, there is a female police detective, and there is a man who was sort of orphaned very young. And um, he was sent to his aunt. His aunt was morbidly obese. And he had a very bizarre relationship with his aunt. And yes, it gets rather graphic and rather disgusting. But after his aunt passes away, the man, as an adult, learns of a mythical woman who is a half maggot on her lower half and human on the upper half, sort of like a mermaid, but a maggot maid or something like that. And it is really graphic and disgusting, but rather interesting as well. Prompt number five, Weave World. Name a horror book that is set in a fantastical world. Anything with an interesting blend of horror sci-fi and fantasy is great. I had a little bit of trouble thinking of a book for this one, but then I remembered a book that I read in the 80s. The very famous author, Shadowland by Peter Straub. It is the story of two young boys who go visit an uncle, one of them, in Vermont. And this uncle is a magician where he's teaching them magic. And it does dwell into the horror later. I really can't remember too much more than that because, you know, I read it in the 80s. And maybe that is a book I'm due for a reread. Prompt number six, a magica. There are two parts to this prompt. A, what is the longest book you have ever read? Well, I'm going to limit my choices to longest horror book that I have read. And for purposes of this video, I'm going to limit it to books that I've read after December 1990, because that's when I started my, my book database. Um, before that, I did read um, Stephen King's The Stand, which is probably longer. No, I know it's longer than the book I'm going to show, but this is what I read since then. This is The Terror by Dan Simmons. This mixes historical fiction and horror in a brilliant way. It is the, the true story or true fictionalization of a account um, of the ship, the Terror, which was uh, run by a captain who was trying to find the Northwest Passage. And that's when you sail up north through the North Pole and um, try to sail around the world. Unfortunately, the ship, the Terror, gets locked in ice in the winter. And up in this North Pole, there is a creature. Now, obviously, the creature is fictional, but the actual ship did exist. And um, I believe a lot of the crew is based on fictional people. And the uh, part B is, do you prefer shorter, sharper books, or big doorstoppers, and why? Well, you know, both are good. The Terror at um, about 800 pages is a fantastic novel. It, it is really one of the best modern horror novels ever written. But Falling Angel is a little over 200 pages, maybe 250 if I remember correctly. Very short and also very poignant and right to the point. So both are very good. And one of my other answers down below is going to be a novella. 
which is super fantastic. And you'll just have to wait for that to come along. Prompt number seven, thief of always. Name your favorite YA horror book. Well, I'm pushing 60. I don't read YA books. It's just not my jam. But I think I can show you an acceptable substitute. Let's go with Tales from the Crypt comics. These are not YA, but it was expected that young people would be reading these comics. And you know something? They're a whole lot of fun. They're not really graphic. They're kind of tame, but the stories are vastly entertaining. And I truly enjoyed these, uh, the, these, these comics. And um, I think most horror readers would enjoy them too. Prompt number eight, Cold Heart Canyon. Name a book where ghosts, ghouls, take the center stage in the story. Hell House by Richard Matheson. This is the story of a scientist who wants to investigate what is actually in a haunted house. In many ways, the, the plot is similar to Shirley Jackson's A Haunting of Hill House. You notice the vowel change, Hill Hell House. Very similar. Now, Shirley Jackson is a very atmospheric book. The, the, the ghost haunting in that book. You're going, what is that? Is that real? Now, Hell House takes a slightly different path where you, you don't have that question as much, but still a fantastic book. It was written in the 70s, and I reread it last year. Parts of it are dated, and um, part of the haunting, I think, does that work or does that not work? Part of it is interesting because it, it leaves you that question about, about, about the haunting, but still a really fantastic book about a haunted house. And uh, now we are going to go into um, Clive Barker's movies. Number nine, Hellraiser. Name a book set in hell. Now, anyone familiar with my channel knows in real life, I'm a skeptic. I don't believe in the supernatural or have heaven or hell, but they're fascinating things to talk about. And in this book, and it is called The Descent by Jeff Long, there is um, a question he raises. Why do we have myths of hell? Is it possible that the hell myth is based on something real? And in this book, people discover a cave system. And in this cave system goes deep within the earth. And deep within this earth, there are creatures who live and have a civilization. And that is all I'm going to say. But yes, it answers the question of why we have the myth of hell. And I highly recommend this book. It is Really fantastic. Sometimes it's listed as a thriller or suspense and not a horror book, but there is a lot of horror in this book. I think it definitely counts as a book that horror readers would enjoy. Number 10, The Midnight Meat Train. Name a story that takes place underground. This could be subways, cave systems, mines, anything that is below the surface. Well, I just answered that in my previous question because the previous one has an underground cave system, but I needed another one. So I'm going to go with When Darkness Loves Us by Elizabeth Engstrom. If you look this up online, I've seen someone say, above all the reprinted paperbacks from hell, this is the best of the lot. And I, I have to agree. Now, I've not read all the reprints, but When Darkness Loves Us is fantastic. It is only a novella. But in this novella, there is a young woman. 
She's 16 or 17 years old, newly married and pregnant. She is on the land in Virginia that her husband owns. It is a large piece of land. And she's wandering around and she comes upon basically some tombs and crypts with an unlocked door. And she starts to explore this crypt. And behind the crypt, she discovers that there is a cave system. But why she's discovering this cave system, her husband approaches the crypt and thinks, I don't want my wife to get lost in here. So he closes the door and locks her in, not knowing that she is behind the door. So this young girl, this young woman, has to explore this dark cave system all alone. She must find things to eat, slimy things that dwell in the puddles of water and give birth to a child all alone in complete darkness. Truly a fantastic novella. You will list it, find it in the paperbacks from hell reprint. And there are a couple of anthologies that have this book, but seek out when darkness loves us. Prompt number 11. Candyman. Name a book based on myths, legends, and folklore. Have you heard of the Jersey Devil? Lots of different myths about a creature that lives in the wilds of New Jersey. Well, here is a novel for you. The Pines by Richard Dunbar. And this is the story of a woman who goes out to New Jersey and encounters the Jersey Devil. And it was a pretty darn good book. Now, one of the interesting things about this book is that when the author originally wrote the book and submitted it to his publisher, the, the main female lead was an African-American woman. He is a Caucasian male. And um, the editors made him change the woman to Caucasian because they just thought it was more appropriate. But in this edition, which is a, a limited edition reprint, he changed back to his original text. Now, that in itself may be problematic these days because Caucasian man writing about an African-American woman, maybe some people would like that. But I did enjoy this book. There is also a sequel called The Shore and a third in the trilogy called The Street. I have not read The Street yet. Prompt number 12, Nightbreed. Name a novel where the reader is more likely to feel sympathy for the creatures, monsters, than the humans in the story. Let's go with Monsters by Barry Windsor Smith. This is actually a graphic novel. And this starts out with a troubled young man in a troubled life, who gets into a whole lot of trouble. Enough trouble that he is uh, recruited by the military to uh, be part of a secret experiment. And the secret experiment is to create a super soldier. That experiment doesn't really go off as planned. And um, you can kind of see the cover of this book. And know what happened to this poor boy. And you feel a lot of sympathy for this boy because um, he does not deserve the fate that he got. And it is a good book. I highly recommend it. Prompt number 13, tag people. I think most of the people I know have been tagged for this. Um, bad is rad too. I think you're tagged, but I'll tag you again if you haven't done this. Alan at Big Hard Books and Classics, I don't think this is your jam, but if you want to try it, give it a shot. I also want to sh uh, tag Books Bound Weirdo and Jim Reads Too Slow. And that is the end of this tag. Thank you for watching and keep on reading.